half. Yeah. Okay. You want me to go like this again? Yeah. You okay. 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 Here we go. Absolutely. Welcome. You're listening to the best of investing on Talk Nine Ten. This is the show where we present valuable information about real estate, the financial markets, and other economic business of the day. And we have a lot of new listeners, so for you guys, uh, imagine uh, this is what our format is. Okay, imagine a bunch of guys sitting around a bar having drinks without the drinks, talking business with you, the audience listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, and I'm pleased to have as my co-host Mark Hahn of Pacific Private Money, California's fastest-growing private lender, and Lou Botmall of LPL Financial. Our phone number is 888 888- 912-1190. Write that number down, 888-912-1190, because you're going to use that number to answer the trivia questions for three vacations given away during each commercial break. You got it. We're giving away nine vacations during this show. Now, the vacations are not sponsored by the radio station, but by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, which is located one hour northeast of San Francisco. The vacations are free. They're only requested. $75 cleaning fee to cover housekeeping expenses. And their website is lighthouse4fun.com. You can reach them at 916 916- 777-5511. Today's trivia theme is, it happened during the 1970s. Uh, Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might be able to get a couple of these. Why can't we get drinks is what I'm wondering. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's been a rough week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Which, uh, we'll get into that in just a minute because yes. you've got some excellent news for us. This, this is going to be one for the ages, this show. Uh, our website is bestofinvesting.com. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube by typing Best of Investing Radio Show. And we're also on television, Comcast Channel 26 and at and 99 on Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 6 p.m. Now, Lou, you are going to uh, bless us all with the information about Obamacare. Obamacare. Let's, let's start with, it's commonly known as the Affordable Care Act, but most people coined it as Obamacare, which is uh, appropriate. Barack Obama put the uh, law into action, and uh, everyone is somewhat confused, uh, intimidated is another word. Somewhat? Somewhat confused, <laughs> intimidated, uh, don't want to research it. I mean, by and large, you know, our listening audience, maybe 30% would be affected, maybe 20%. It's not everybody's going to go to Obamacare. Well, so. you know, I tried to call the president to ask him questions, and he hasn't returned my call yet. Well, oh, he was man. a little busy this week with the, uh, the crazy lady that ran the, uh, the White House. But uh, Yeah, negotiations have been tough with the White House. Well, I mean, I, I think you know, the, the most important thing you do uh, on the show is, is give people some, some information. Let's start with the website, which is, has changed as of October 1st, which is this week. And it's CoveredCA.com, www.CoveredCA.com. It's a great resource. It's very comprehensive. Um, you're not covered by an employer's insurance plan. This website's a good place to start to start asking questions. Now, so, you said covered CA, like right. Cover California. Right. It used Is to be Cover California. changed. Okay, but wasn't there something called healthcare.org or something? Like right, that? that's a different website. So a lot of these okay. websites have changed in the last week, literally. Wow. So some okay. were like, you can ask questions about how it might impact you. Now they want you to, to actually input your actual information, uh, possibly some income information, your family members, and then. Oh, so, you like a, so you get like a real correct. quote as to how much it's going to cost. Correct, okay. correct. And what, right. what, I mean, the big, the big overriding theme here is watch your benefits. Your benefits could be disappearing if you go into the exchange versus what you have currently. If you're in an employer plan, by and large, you might want to stay with it right now. And there's a lot of kinks in the system. Is that, is that a good technical yeah. term? Kinks yeah. in the system. There's a lot of things here that need to be worked out. We need to actually experience it. So I'm going to go through some of the provisions you can to to maybe hold off Obamacare for a year if you want to. So let's get started here. So. Um, you know, Covered California is the exchange established by the state of California. It was required by Obamacare. That will be one of the avenues to purchase health insurance coverage beginning in 2014. So open enrollment starts now, October 1st. You must enroll by December 15th. Write that down mentally. December 15th, you have to enroll in the plan. If you're going to... If you're going to, if you're going to utilize the plan through the exchange. I'm writing this down. Yeah. 12, 15. <laughs> so, <laughs> the size of your family, your income determines you're eligible for government reductions of insurance premiums and co-pays. For example, a family of four in the Bay Area low number. An income of $70,000 have premiums of 1053 per month. Wait, I pay less than that now for a family of four. Now I have a high deductible. Correct, but you also don't have some of the offsets that Obamacare or ACA or Affordable Care Act provides a premium reduction. Also, you have to check and see in your case what your co-pays are, what your prescription medication uh, provisions are, and you know things like uh, going to the emergency room, we're going to see specialists. Oh, yeah. All these numbers are changing. God, it's so hard to figure out. It's, I mean, it's, oh, it's difficult. My, my yeah. plan is so bad that I'm covered unless I get hurt. 
Or right. injured. Yes, that's, that's how a lot of people are. So, I mean, they, they, they just collect premiums. They don't pay. The, the, big, uh, the big hope here in the Affordable Care Act is that people actually, young, healthy people, join the plan. That's the only way it's going to work. Well, that's the whole thing about insurance to right. offset the people who are unhealthy. Yeah, so th this, is, this is kind of the big thing that no one really knows yet. I wanted to kind of broadcast it out there. You, you have, and these are layers of documents you have to search through. So I, I went to a couple different resources and talked to a few experts. Um, another way it's going to impact is the new provider networks that are available in the individual marketplace. So some people who are offering Medicare or medical insurance might start or stop offering now. Most of the big names are still in the plan. Kaiser, Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. But there's some provisions to that. You want to determine if the current providers are included within the network or of your new health insurance plan. So if you go to a certain hospital, there's a chance that your Obamacare insurance might not be covered in that hospital. I guess I, the thing I'm a little confused about was there was something about it was going to force what was Obamacare going to force? Okay, that so that, that, yeah, that's no, that's so that's that's a tax. They, they let the employers off the hook. So the first step was fifty or more employees. You had to have insurance, yeah. or fifty and under. Excuse me, had to have insurance. They let that go for a year. This is the whole thing. That this is the tweaking that's going to occur over the next twelve months. Okay. So that was the first thing. The second thing was you have to pay a penalty. So the, the way the math works out is like this: if you don't have uh, any insurance, you go to a doctor. You have to pay about a ninety-five dollar penalty. If you that's get also it, bad. if you get insurance, it's one hundred and fifty dollars, and you're covered. So what you rather do? It's, it's you make it negligible. Now that number, that ninety-five dollar number, is going to start growing, depending on how many people use the program. So they, you see how all the variables are going into this thing. So this is the big thing for people listening in the Bay Area, especially and online. Um, there's a great hospital here called University of California, San Francisco. It's a passion part of me. I had a daughter with cancer, so we went through that system. And it's our understanding right now, as we stand here in October, Anthem Blue Cross is the only provider in that network. So if you are currently at UCSF, you need to call and find out if you're covered. You will be applied to UCSF in the future if you're not with Anthem Blue Cross. Okay, I'm with Anthem. Are they going to be proactive and get in touch with me as to what I should do based on my circumstances? Probably not. Yeah, so they're going to mail you. You're probably going to get three or four pieces of mail in the next two weeks discussing your current insurance, the fact that you can log into CaliforniaCA.com and look at the different options. That's covered covered CA right, that, that's that's really where you are right now. They're, they want you to determine what's best for you. So someone who's a, you know, the, the backbone of America is built on small businesses. All of us in this room run some form of small business, and that's where this is going to have a lot of impact. Because people are saying, well, gee, it's better to be part of the exchange, or it's better to have our, our current insurance program. Yeah. Um, so I want to jump on that real quick. If you have, if you're an employer paying for medical coverage, um, you may or may not be eligible for the government help helping you pay for your premiums and co-pays through the Covered California Exchange. If you're an employer, you will need to review the cost, benefits, and networks of your existing plan and determine if a change is needed. If you're an insurance carrier, renew your plan on December 13th to delay the impact of the Affordable Care Act in 2014. That's important. You can you can renew your plan now and it's good for 12 months. You change your renewal date. Or uh, why do I feel like going, da, 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 da. I feel like I'm in a circus. <laughs> It is it, it, it is a little bit of a circus because, in the end, they included the insurance companies. So this is not socialized medicine like you find overseas where, okay, yeah, the, the government's going to take care of you, like Medicare. This is not Medicare. This is, we're utilizing the insurance companies. There's tax offsets. Uh, there's there are different ways of programs. I mean, in the end, looking through everything, less benefits, more costs is where this thing started. If I get hurt, can I take you to my doctor and you can kind of explain this to him? <laughs> Many many doctors are determining what they're what they're going to take and not take. I mean, that's that's the end result. I mean, oh, and the doctor also the, gets to decide whether he's going to sure, take insurance. Like, well, some doctors don't take Medicare anymore, right? I mean, yeah, I've got a few clients who go good with that scenario. Well, so it's, you know, yeah. so so if you have the opportunity to renew before 2014, I suggest you do it. I suggest with your existing with your existing carrier. Yeah, that, so we just did this month. Right. So your so, so, plan for that kind of thing. Right. So next October, you have to worry about it. Okay, now I, I don't have a, a company plan. I just have individual one where I each month they just send me a bill and I pay it. So I, I don't necessarily renew for another year. I'm kind of on a month to month, aren't I? No, you have a renewal date. Anyone who has an insurance plan has a renewal date. It's not renewed. It's not renewed on a quarterly or monthly basis. It's renewed every year. So that's when the, the things change. So yeah, I don't even know what my renewal. Yeah, so you want to call up and find out. That's probably okay. a good key. Tell you what, hold on to that thought. Uh, Lou Bottmall from LPL Financial is uh, quite uh, experienced here in the Obamacare. The Obamacare expert here. I you lost in all the reading. <laughs> but yeah, listen, you've got uh, much more information uh, about this than I do. Okay, we're going to cut to our first commercial break. Again, the theme is it happened during the 1970s. 
What legendary southern rock group had several of its members killed or injured during the airplane crash, during an airplane crash on October, in October 1977? Oh, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter, I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Carter. The first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort, which, by the way, I was in school when this happened, and I sort of like when people say when JFK got shot, where were you? I was too little for that, but I do remember this one. Okay, the first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. What legendary southern rock group had several of its members killed or injured during an airplane crash in October 1977? One more time, 888-912-1190. Make sure to include your name, email address, speak slowly, spell out your email one letter at a time, don't touch that dial because when we come back, Lou Bobball is going to finish up with uh, Obamacare and giving us some, he's going to educate us. Try it. Try it. Uh, I, I don't know. on uh, how the uh, government shutdown ends or is the Republicans, Republicans going to get anything uh, out of Obamacare on this? What, you know, the, the, at this point now, what they say about the districts is nobody wins. So the Republicans get what they want. They're not going to win seats in Congress. Mm -hmm. If the Democrats lose, they don't pick up any seats in Congress. Yeah, it's like there's no one. This is the end game. Is that if you have so many congressional districts that are Republican controlled, they're going to stay that way. Yeah. You know, it's just the system's so messed. It's like everyone's staring down at each other. Well, they're not going to repeal Obamacare. It's not going to happen. It went through the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until, until Congress decides to change it. Right? Yeah. Ours is going to be a lot of changes. <laughs> But they included the insurance companies. That's part of the problem. So now you know the, the trick about Leonard Skinner is oh, they had an that. album. Very good. They had an album before the accident, and then the album cover after the accident has flames around it. Have you ever seen that? There's pictures of it online. It's pretty kick-ass. Have you ever seen that? Wow. You guys bought the album before and after. Well, I was. I was. Um, I'll, I'll I thought the flames were there. before they took it off after. Was it after? Was it after? Or was yeah, it, it was before. Uh, that's it was, probably, I'm thinking that's... They, that yeah, they, they launched the album with flames correct. around them, and then uh, then they crashed, and then they, they removed the flames. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. So sad. Mm. I saw the reunion tour in 87. Oh, what's that? I saw them on the reunion tour in 87. Oh, really? Yeah, cool. Wait a minute. You, um, you said something about your daughter. She right. She has cancer. She had cancer. She had leukemia. She and couldn't walk. She's yeah. fine now. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. For some reason, I thought you said she yeah. died. And no, 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 no. So no. I mean, I, okay. we were in UCSF. She spent her first, you know, kindergarten, first grade year in the hospital ward at UCSF. Wow. For sure. There's a seven Moffitt. That's the uh, camp. They actually rebuilt it. So a friend of mine from high school's daughter died there. And he has a foundation that supplies all the uh, games and TVs. It's really cool. The guy all turned out for cancer. So, yeah, it's the, that's the worst Christmas you ever spent on cancer. I can are. only imagine. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Luckily, we got out before Christmas. Okay. Right. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hunt of Pacific Private Money and Lou Botmall of LPL Financial. When we cut to the first commercial break, we asked this trivia question. What legendary Southern rock group had several of its members killed or injured during an airplane crash in October 1977? Band name after janitor Leonard Skinner. Janitor, no, no, he, no, was a, he was a PE teacher. He's a PE thought. teacher, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah his name was Leonard Skinner. Skinner. Yeah, that, that's yeah. right. We were talking about this uh, before that uh, apparently Waylon Jennings was supposed to be on that airplane. This is the story I heard, and he missed the plane. He also apparently missed the plane uh, for the one that killed Buddy, Buddy Holly. Holly. Yes. So he's got like a flying Dutchman or something. Yes. Wow. Kind of wild. Richie Valens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. And, and the big bopper. The big bopper. Yeah. Bopper. So. Um, okay. Go ahead. Let me jump in here. So yeah. this this is the big thing. This is where a lot of confusion starts because we're talking about the Affordable Care Act and all the changes that are happening. For those 65 and older, which there's a big chunk of the audience sure. that might be fit in there. So you have an additional choice to pay for your own health insurance. Medicare is still available. It's not changing or altering Medicare at all. Okay, the only thing is there's one change, and that's a reduction in the donut hole. There's this big provision in, in Medicare that people talk about, like if prescriptions are covered, and by costs are covered, then they're not covered. They're not covered for a bit, and then they are covered again. That's the donut hole. That yep. dis that disappears by 2021. I thought a donut hole is one of those things you sit on when you have like 
hemorrhoids or something. <laughs> or the middle of the donut they don't want left over the donut shop. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah, my so, favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you'll have a choice in enrolling in the health insurance plan through the exchange. So if you're over 65, you might say, hey, I want to I get through the plan here. So if you have a uh, possibly, anyway, remember the big thing here is if you have a pre-existing condition, it doesn't matter. You're not shopping insurance saying, well, I have diabetes. Is that okay? Because everyone's accepted. Everyone's right? accepted. I have, you know, uh, macular degeneration. You know, it's not a problem anymore. So people will be looking at stuff saying, should I change my plan? So you could, but the, the odds are unlikely that you want to change out of the plan. You know, I've, I've traveled to other parts of the country. I'm sure you guys have too. And, you know, here we're, here we're sitting in, the Calif in California, in the Bay Area, where a lot of people are in generally good health. But, you know, I can't help but think that, you know, now I'm going to have watch my premiums go up because the Mississippi now I, there. Because yeah, I, you know, don't I've, have been, again. <laughs> I've been on places in, in, in the states where you go to like a local park or a water park or a theme park and, and the, the obesity of the population in those areas is astounding. Well, everything's fried. And the diabetes and you, you just got to think of, I mean, the, the cost of health care to cover all those people who are abusing, you know, their health and making poor choices. Yeah. I just, I, I just, I don't see how this, smokers. I don't see how, the, yeah, how it's yeah. going to work out financially. Well, also, what, what are kind of deductibles are, are we looking at at Obamacare? Um, well, if you log onto the, the the website, you'll see. I mean, deductibles range anywhere from you know forty to sixty to sometimes eighty dollars. I think I think, think sixty five is kind of the max. Yeah, see, that, that's a copay. That's copay. That's a copay. Okay. Are there deductibles, any deductibles? Deductibles for a family, I think, is sixty four hundred, and for an individual, it's twenty five. Okay, so it's very similar to regular, regular old insurance, insurance right. anyway. Right. Okay, right. Yeah. because that's the problem, though, is is if you have these copays that are so small or no deductible type of thing. People, you know, they get a little hangnail and boom, run to the doctor, run to the right. emergency room. You know, who cares? Someone else is paying for it. Exactly. You know, that's, that, that's all. And that, now you get a penalty or you pay for the insurance. That's kind of the idea. And again, those penalties are going to go up. You know, for more information about ACA, or ACA and, and Medicare, I'm, I'm actually hosting a seminar oh. on October 24th at both Santa Rosa and Ross. Um, they're San Anselmo in Marin County. Um, you get information on my website, www.lewispotmall.com. That's L O U I S B A T M A L E. Last name's French, not Italian. Big mistake is made all the time. So, <laughs> my grandpa, my grandpa, yeah, my grandpa always teased me about that. He looked pretty Italian, but yeah, we're from France, I guess. But um, so there's some discussion around current policies being grandfathered. This is an important provision. Okay, everyone's talking about why might be grandfathered. Those are policies that didn't change after 2010, which is highly unlikely. We've had a lot of changes to your medical insurance since 2010. So I recommend checking with your insurance company to see if you have a policy that is grandfathered. They have to disclose that to you. If so, this will provide you additional level of flexibility. Built the flexibility, you can stay on your Disney plan or enroll in the new ACA plan effective. So um, you have to enroll by December 15th. Remember that date? I wrote that down. So I wrote that down. Yeah, so in summary, expect many of the costs associated with medical expenses, premium, co pays, deductibles, and annual out of pockets to increase from their current levels. Okay, remind the audience because you went through that really quickly about okay. when your seminar is. Because, okay. you know, I'm, I'm looking at this going, I, you know, I. I October 24th. Eyes got, blaze over. Yeah. Got, October 24th, I got 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, I think 10 a.m. is in Marin County and, and 2 p.m. is in Santa Rosa. Oh, you're going to run up to Santa Rosa right after the in Ross. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> They're not going to let Ross. you go and see in, in Ross. They're going to keep asking you questions. <laughs> exactly. <so. laughs> um, we're going to talk about that. And, and the financial impact is really the big thing. So www.lois, B as in boy, A T M A L E dot com. It's listed there. You can RSV. You spelled, you, you spelled that correctly. That was good. Yeah, I tried really hard. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in kindergarten with you guys. <laughs> so know your options. Understand what is important to you about health care, low premiums, low co-pays, broad network. That can be very important. And make sure you continue to educate yourself on how to best make a financial decision. Because in the end, this is all about costs. That's okay. really what it's all about. Okay, let's move on from Obamacare to right. uh, the shutdown okay. of, of the government. Are yeah, any, comments? Any bets on... Uh, what, if anything, the, the Republicans gain or get out of Obamacare from the shutdown? I, I, I can't see a, a position where we've been through the Supreme Court and they say, okay, we want to change something after it's been through the Supreme Court. So, you know, in the end, the Democrats don't lose anything. The Republicans who are elected really don't lose much because they're not going to go back to those constituencies, those areas where they're from. So, like in California, for instance, San Diego and Riverside are big Republican areas. Which are about the only two in the... But I'm just giving for example. I'm not going to go back there and say, we're going to get you out of here because you, you shut down the government. People don't care. People people are fighting. But in the end, it's going to affect the markets. The longer this goes on, government makes up 18% of GDP out there. 
you know, they pay a lot of bills, they employ yeah. a lot of people, and the longer they stop paying money into the system, the bigger problem we're having economically. But, but of course, most of them are still taking their paycheck, which is uh, just a, a, a abominable to me. I was listening to Armstrong and Getty this morning, and they were talking about the government shutdown on, on a couple of things, like the parks. And right. it's like, uh, there's there some open parks that there is nothing to do, and yet they're, they're putting barriers around. Right. It's costing more for the barriers than they're, it would be to hire when somebody. Renting those barriers, installing the barriers, paying people to yeah. run around and guard people from going in. Yeah. Which, which they were going in anyway. It's not like the, it's not like it had a guard gate that went up and down. Well, I think Yosemite's one of the big ones. Yosemite's all blocked up, isn't it? Or parts of Yosemite? I think you can't walk around right now. They're going to have to hire the bears. Or <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, it's Yogi, just, it's just Yogi. Like, no, you know what? And then they like what do they do? Cover the memo- the Lincoln Memorial, cover his face or something, so you can't. They barricade these things, and it's all a front. Right? It's ridiculous. You know? Yeah, it's like, like well, locally here, we have the Blue Angels aren't coming this year because they sequestered all that stuff. It's like it's kind of like window dressing. We all live without Blue Angels for one year, but it's the same thing. It's you know, what's it really costing? You know, it's all political thing. stuff, right? It's you know, blame these guys. They're, see, if they didn't do that, look what happened. Look, look what would happen. Well, one of the big things of the Republican. Uh, Republicans were hoping was to get you know Obamacare to be delayed uh, for a year. Not necessarily. I mean, that, the whole repeal thing is just you know was never really serious. But the you know to, to, to study it. For why, a year. why do they want to delay it? That's the big question. Do you know why? No. Because the new congressman, new congressman, congressman comes in, they think they can change, change it. it. Yeah. They're trying to they're yeah, trying to they're trying to load a gun. They're saying, oh well, yeah. let, let, let me load this gun for the next year sure. and see what I can do. Yeah, because even though the Supreme Court already voted on it, it right. Congress can change the rules. Right. If they vote, if they vote on it. Yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of reloading the gun. So it, I mean, I, I gotta say from an investment standpoint, I'm so frustrated because everyone's super nervous. In 2011, it's all fresh in everyone's mind. That was 2008 still there, but 2011 was there, and the market went down 20 percent in about what six weeks, based on these same arguments. And it's just them not doing their job. So anyway, we're gonna cut to a uh, second commercial break here. When we come back, we've got some very interesting uh, emails uh, that we're gonna ask about with. Uh, we're going to ask Lou, with the stock market so volatile, what are you recommending to your clients? So that'll be a good email. Mm-hmm. And Mark, we have one up that has to do with your new real estate uh, mortgage fund and the use of leverage. So we got some really good stuff coming up here. All right, here is our second commercial break trivia question. Again, the theme is, it happened during the 1970s. What was the name of the Pennsylvania location where a nuclear power plant suffered a partial core meltdown in March 1979. The first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse4fun.com. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. What was the name of the Pennsylvania location where a U.S. nuclear power plant suffered a partial core meltdown in March 1979? Again, call 888 888- 912-1190. Make sure to include your name, your email address. Speak slowly. Spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial because the best of investing will be right back. Anybody? Anybody? Three Mile Three Mile, Three mile, Three mile Island. What, what was the movie with Michael Douglas and Jane Fonda that came out just before then? Or after? Was it before or after? Must have been Kramer, what, what, remember that movie? There was a, it was the movie about the nuclear meltdown. Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it I, was, I didn't know. Maybe Michael, it was called the China Syndrome. The China Syndrome, yeah. Thank yeah. you. And I think yeah. it was before. I think it was like a year before it happened. Yeah. Was it yeah. really? Was I think it was, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it was kind of freaky. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that's the way they were talking. I was reading the thing the other day about um, who was the person that wrote about 9-11 before it happened? Oh, Tom Clancy. Oh, right. He just passed oh, away. Yeah. He, wrote a, he wrote a scenario kind of like 9-11. Right. Maybe, maybe the bad uh, guys the plane, pilot drove the plane, plane in the, yeah. to the White House yeah, exactly. or Congress. Or, uh, that, that, maybe the bad guys, the terrorists are reading that and they go, hey, this is a good idea. Yeah, yeah no, it's so sad. God, it's just, uh, great shit. Oh, I, I, had a, um, I, had a, I have a friend who, he was on a conference call on 9-11 early in the morning with, um, there was him, his, his son, and like 20 other people, one of those big investment firm type thing, right. right? And his son, this guy, this guy was telling me that there was a guy in Texas, and his son was in New York in one of the buildings, and suddenly they heard this big boom! And, like, oh, my God. And, and then after you know, a few minutes, finally the son, I mean, everyone's listening to this on a conference call around the country, and the son is telling his dad, Dad, I, I can't get out. Can you imagine that? 
and it's and he says, I love you, Dad, and I love you, son. And and then I mean eventually you she, scary that would be Ugh. oh man and on that happy note yeah. <laughs> how are you Mr. Kramer <laughs> well, time to employ Cray America let's go Cray America <laughs> sorry Kramer I had to bust it out <laughs> I had to bust out a sign film that's, that's, that's a good one I'm just trying to lighten the mood real quick yeah we're slicing through this heavy jelly right it's now. Like that. It's a tax write off. Well, you don't even know what a tax write off is. No, but they do. Is <laughs> he <laughs> Dr. Boinjig or whatever he used to call himself? Yeah. With, with the pipe in his mouth and the hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Um, yeah, what was that? Uh, I can't remember now. But I remember Vandalay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Go see Vandalay. <laughs> see Vandalay. <Yeah. laughs> he runs out of his pants down. <laughs> No, it's Vandalay. There's no Vandalay. Yeah. <laughs> you got the wrong number. Yeah. There's no Vandalay. So what's it like? I mean, it's still not, I mean, with all that money, Larry David's still not happy, so what's that tell you, right? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I'm sorry. My, my favorite Seinfeld, I mean, this is this is perfect, and it had to be this one situation or else it couldn't have happened this way. George is, let's see, what is he? He's not having sex, and so he becomes, like, really smart, and he's working for the Yankees, and he's explaining about how the trajectory, he's talking to Bernie Williams and, and Paul yeah. O'Neill, right? And he's and the ball's coming, he's had like a pitching machine or something, and he's knocking these balls out of the park. And, and these two guys are kind of looking, and go, who is this guy? And he goes, well, I'm George, I'm part of the traveling team. And he's oh, he explaining about the trajectory of the ball and how you have to hit for all runs, right? And these guys are all, and so Paul O'Neill says, uh, hey, we won the World Series last year. He goes, yeah, six games. <laughs> If it was a sweep, it wouldn't be funny. If it was seven games, it wouldn't be funny. Yeah. Six games, perfect. Just perfect. Okay. Um, so we're starting with a question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, can we get into his email just because we're... Yeah, sure. Up there? On a roll. All right. Blue butt ball I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's timely. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with my co-host, Mark Hahn from Pacific Private Money and Lou Botmall of LPL Financial. And when we got to the second commercial break, we asked this trivia question. What was the name of the Pennsylvania location where a U.S. nuclear power plant suffered a partial floor meltdown in March 1979? And Mark, you knew this one. Three Mile Island. Three Mile Island. Island. Very good. Okay, Lou, uh, we promised the audience, <clears throat> excuse me, we teased them with what we were going to come back with. And I don't like teasing the audience and then not coming through. So we're going to get right into this email here. With the stock market so volatile, what are you recommending to your clients to ease the volatility? I want to ask the question again. Why aren't we drinking while we're talking on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to ask. Um, when he right. gets people listening. What happened to the name? I, I could go in that off the air. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what but, I call EF nothing. Yeah, right. exactly. So, <laughs> um, you know, this question has come up a ton with a lot of different people. And, uh, Know, sometimes investing is driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour looking in the rearview mirror. If you look in the rearview mirror, you know, this happened in 2011. It took us a long time to recover, but we did recover. Um, it took about four or five months. So, you know, these short term blips will happen. If we don't hit this political gridlock all the time, uh, unfortunately, too often in the last five or six years, and it does affect the market, as I mentioned earlier. The government's not spending money that has a drag on GDP. If this goes on for Five, seven, 10, 15 days, that's going to, you know, people won't get paychecks in time. Like that happened in California a few years ago. Remember that, where vendors weren't getting paid. Oh, yeah. yeah. The same thing's going to happen. Or they, so, they got the voucher. They got vouchers. Yeah, yeah, we're going to pay at some point in the future. Well, super. That doesn't help us. It doesn't help the economy move along. Um, we are heading into earnings season from an investment standpoint, so we're here a lot of, a lot of different news. One key thing that people aren't talking about is kind of a factoid. You know, kind of, this is the shortest shopping season ever before Christmas. In terms of number of days, number of days between Thanksgiving, I think is the twenty eighth, is it of November? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're you know last year's one of the longest. This year's one of the shortest. So a lot of a lot of companies are already talking about their you know that's where you're seeing Christmas stuff and Halloween stuff is like already over. I think they're pulling off the shelves. And I'm already seeing rabbits for uh, Easter, Easter exactly. So so my point is this: is that during earnings season, we're going to hear about a lot of this short shop shopping season, you know, the debt ceiling debate, um, which is still happening on top of the government shutdown. Uh, what, how's it going to affect stocks? Well, I think it could have a pretty good impact on stocks. I think 
think it affects seasonal labor because there's such a short season who's going to hire seasonal labor. So I, I'm not saying jump out of the market. If you're allocated, you have so much money in stocks and so much money in bonds. And the big question is, why did they lose so much in bonds this year? Well, back in June and May, they said we might change interest rates. Yeah. Everybody stopped buying bonds, so interest rates jumped to almost 3%. About I mean, the, interest six rate, rate, the 10 year interest rate went yeah. to almost 3%. Now it's back down, I think it's 2.6 this week, yeah. somewhere in that range. So when people get fearful, they start jumping back into bonds. I'm not suggesting a lot of quick moves here. There's no reason to do that because they can end this in three hours and they wouldn't sit down and start talking <laughs> and doing their job. Yeah, okay too, to do it. too political now. Exactly. So, I mean, it could turn around very quickly. Um, so the problem about getting out or going to cash or changing your allocation drastically is you don't move back in the right time. There's still people from 2008 that are not allocated correctly because they're still nervous. Which is understandable, but it doesn't help you when the market goes up, you know, 18 percent a year like this year. You sound like quite the economist. How do uh, how do people get a hold of you when they want to ask more questions? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who have a lot of questions about this volatility, and they go, "Who do I trust? Who do I call?" Well, I, good good ways is, is is the phone number always 415-256-8970. Earlier, I gave my website, which is www.lewis. Botmall, L O U I S B A T M A L E dot com. And you type that in and, and you get me my email address and you know, it's about the seminar number. And I'm sure people, uh, you give some free advice to them. Absolutely. Clients. Just give me a call and you have some questions regarding your current portfolio. I, I'll, I'll say this I've had a lot of people call me last last two months saying I own only bonds. What should I do? And yeah. that's a provocative question right now because you really do need to make a difference in your portfolio decisions. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mark, we got an email that said, does your new fund use any leverage? If so, what are the advantage and uh, and what are the risks? Well, just on a transitional note, if the stock market is scaring you witless and you <laughs> want to uh, know about uh, alternative investment strategies uh, uh, like Pacific Private Money, we do have a mortgage pool fund right now that's paying uh, secured annual returns to its shareholders of around 8.5% secured by Bay Area real estate uh, with a portfolio weighted average right now of 53% loan to value. So just uh, fabulous protective equity, security, and a great interest rate. Um, and what was the question again? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, so, so, so does our fund use leverage to achieve those 8.5% uh, eight, eight yields? The answer is no, absolutely not. Uh, we do not uh, use leverage other than we're working on uh, obtaining a line of credit that will help us close loans more quickly and then pay them down as new shareholder money comes into the fund. So that's that's a, an option that a lot of uh, uh, mortgage pool fund managers use. Uh, so it's it's leverage in a sense that it's um, you know that you're closing within a line of credit. But the idea is is that as new investment money comes in, you would pay that line of credit. So it's short term. It's not it's not short term. As opposed to a long term, there are funds out there that are using leverage to achieve. Uh, higher yields in the fund, it allows them to offer lower interest rates on the note rate, but since uh, they're using a leveraged fund, in other words, they're borrowing, let's say, you know, 25% of the, of the asset value, as an example, to, to boost the fund rate up and, and uh, get those higher yields to investors. But no, we're not, we're not doing that. And that is a way that a lot of funds uh, got in trouble um, prior to the collapse of the, uh, uh, well, when the real estate market collapsed, funds that were using leverage, Difficulties and liquidity issues, and some of those funds did not survive, and people lost uh, lost capital. So, you know, we're running our fund conservatively, uh, and we do not intend to use uh, leverage to boost yields, other than again for the short-term uh, ability to close loans. So, uh, for more information about uh, uh, mortgage pool investing, uh, we have a sister show that uh, well, you just missed it because it was at, at 10 a.m. this morning on uh, AM. 960, uh, sister channel to uh, KNEW. KNEW, yeah, KNEW AM 960. We, we have an hour long show called uh, Mortgage Investing 101 where we talk about uh, uh, trustee investing in mortgage pool funds uh, in great detail. Uh, so, for more information, check that out next Saturday. But uh, also, for more information, you can call uh, our uh, Bay Area phone number. We're at 415 883 2150. That's 415 883 to our website at pacificprivatemoney.com. And you can also go to the best of investing.
Facebook.com. Absolutely. Awesome. Check them out. Okay, we're going to cut to our uh, third and final commercial break trivia question. And here it is. Again, the theme is it happened one night. No, it happened during the 1970s. <laughs> what famous actress earned the name Hanoi Jane? The first three callers with the correct answer. You're going to give a point to Tanner there, Lou. Uh, the first three callers before with the, my time. Before your time. That, that is true. <laughs> the first three callers with the correct answer win a free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse the number four fun.com. Call 888 912 1190. That's 888 912 1190 to answer this question. What famous actress earned the nickname Hanoi Jane? Make sure to include your name, your email address. Speak slowly. Spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial because when the best of investing comes back, we're going to have some closing comments. Now, good morning, Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really yeah. Mark, Mark, I got it. China system. China yeah, China system. system. Oh, Jean, 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 thank you. Yeah. Jean Fonda. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, she was in that, wasn't that big movie? I remember that when I was, when I was, I was pretty on Coming Home was a big oh, movie. Oh, yeah, that's right, with uh, John, John Boyd. Boyd. Yeah. She looked hot in that. Yeah, she was hot. She was definitely hot. Yeah. Well, she actually looks like good her. for age now. You didn't like her, but you liked him? She, you see that uh, last week on the internet they showed uh, Raquel Welsh come out. Uh, I mean, it's just like, she was are you kidding favorite. me? She was she's, always my favorite. She's 70 what? I mean, her and Jane Fonda or Sophia Loren, you're like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And Cher. Yeah, but Cher. Put them all together yeah. on stage. <laughs> but I mean, have you seen, I mean, you, you've seen the famous One Million Years BC? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, you know, she's wearing a loincloth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. She was always the hot one. She was on the Seinfeld episode. Oh, yeah, she was. Crazy Raquel Welch. That's it. <laughs> she's crazy. She's nuts. Yeah. Kramer, you got to fire her. She, she walks with her hands to her side. <laughs> Can we go without you? <laughs> Are we still on? I think so. Uh, Can we right now? I actually could use a glass of porter or a shot of whiskey right about now. You know, you know in, my, in the old days, I used to, when I do, used to do a lot of things in the parking lot, I actually had this huge, beautiful thing I had made, you know, to put my books and stuff, and I had a bar. Yeah. In there. That's great. I, I had this one contractor went to see one time. I go, is that, is that your closing table? It was like this whole alcohol thing lined up. Just like, I just had a couple, like, Amaretto or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was pretty funny. Yeah, it's, uh, I know. So EFI, they they became Shearson Lehman Brothers, oh, or which okay. which became well, they came was it Shearson, they went Shearson Lehman then they were they're, they're part of basically Smith Barney is where they yeah. became. But they what they did is they sold all those um, oil and gas partnerships. So EF ah. Hutton was EF Hutton was kicking ass, and then what happens is brokerage firms like Merrill Lynch or others say start doing this. Brokers don't know much about it, or they haven't invested. It's kind of like a collateralized notes and stuff like that. Yeah. So they start doing that, and all of a sudden they're in a world of hurt. Then they start getting sued, and it was over. Like, and they were they were they were as good as they said they were back yeah. in the day. And then it was all it was over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. tagline. Speak, speak like and that. you can't do that anymore. And Smith Barney. Right, you can't. <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, <laughs> you know, they, uh, they make money the old-fashioned way. They steal it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that anymore. You can't. You can't. The advertisers have gotten pretty hard to do. You know, like, what, what do you see it? from the advertisers for securities firms? Oh, wow. Yeah, you don't see it anymore. Yeah. Cause it, not because they can't afford it. It's like tobacco. Tobacco would still be advertising, but they don't let them. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. security firms are very restrictive as what they say well, they do. So. How many minutes do we have? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I should have been doing that one thing right there. It's all right. My bad. Um, we'll just want to keep you on your toes so we don't like you have to guess it. Right. I mean, that's what comedy did at the end of this show to kind of fill the, fill the dead Feelings. space. It's nothing more than that. <laughs> What's your favorite song from the 70s? Uh, Captain Tennille. I used to like Captain and Tennille. The Captain and Toenail. <laughs> She's a kitty. <laughs> I like that song. That's Henry Gross. Thank you very much. Yeah, Henry Gross, yeah. I do. I have it on my hip. The show's so passing. Yeah. The show's passing me by thirty years. <laughs> yes. Okay, hold on. We got a, a nice long segment here, my friends. Yeah. Good. Uh-oh. What do we got? Fourteen minutes. Okay. Fourteen minutes. Do you want me to do? You gonna do some stuff? Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about. Do a little singing and dancing. I got one. I have another paragraph. <laughs> it's, it's it's all basically we talked about. We've already done it. Back in the real estate economic engine is not strong. 
Question, you can answer the trivia question, and then I got. Uh, Not me, you gotta answer it, right? Because it's more. What, should we shock him? Yes. Lou figured it out online. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you almost been home. Okay, you ready? There we go. Then I'll, I'll get to this, then we'll get into the trivia question. I got it. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hahn and Lou Baumall. And we cut to the third and final trivia qu commercial break. We asked this trivia question. What famous actress earned the nickname Hanoi Jane? That'd be the fun and lovely Jane Fonda. The fun and lovely Jane Fonda. <laughs> that is correct. Okay, now before uh, we continue on, I need to mention that we're going to have next week another special trivia contest. Nice. Where the winner is going to receive a beautiful two-night stay at the Seal Cove Inn in Half Moon Bay. Refresh, relax, and rejuvenate. Treat yourself to the coastal casual taste of life at Seal Cove Inn where you'll start your day with a wonderful farm-to-table three-course breakfast and end it with a fireside glass of local wine paired with deliciously crafted small bites. Enjoy the beauty and culture of San Francisco or stroll around quaint Half Moon Bay, just a short walk from our secluded hideaway to the many trails that take you through majestic forests of century-old pine and eucalyptus, eucalyptus trees. Your breath will be taken by the view of, from the bluffs overlooking the magnificent Pacific Ocean and Moss Beach Coast. Uh, at low tide, the, uh, you can see the seals playing and lounging on the beach. You can play with the seals. I like that. <laughs> and in minutes, be right down by the water's edge, exploring the tide pools, or just enjoying a spectacular sunset. Our staff is here to help create memories at Seal Cove Inn, where your, our goal is to nourish your soul. Check them out at Seal Cove Inn. Doesn't that sound nice? Absolutely. I like that. Okay. Mark, take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sorry, Lou. You wanted to say one last thing. What well, I mean, I, in preparing for today's show. <laughs> yeah, I want to put it bluntly. Wait, wait, hold here. On. That lets people know that we do prepare for the show. We don't just do it on the fly. No, no, absolutely not. So put blunt, bluntly, um, all that's happening with the political divide is not good for the economy. The economic engine may be weak, um, considering the unemployment is not going down and uh, GDP is not expanding to that extent. So I want to tell people that. You know, the market's been hovering this year since probably about May. It's going to continue to hover. And the decision by um, the Federal Reserve not to buy bonds is probably going to steer the market towards this, you know, do we believe it, do we not believe it type of scenario over the next four months. I mean, it's going to be a tough run at the end of the year, but don't jump out of the market. Um, I think we need to buckle up for a couple weeks of earnings and corporate predictions and show that the holiday season, you know, could be pretty tough this year with it being so short. So... I encourage people, you know, give us a call if you have a question. Um, but more importantly, you know, kind of stay the course a little bit. If you're invested, just stay there, okay? That's, that's the big thing. So everyone's asking questions right now, and now is not a time to react. And are you a fee-only planner? Or? Yes, fee-only planner, yes. Okay, so no commissions on that. Right. One of the good guys. Good Try. Guys. <laughs> and in fact, Mark, on your uh, uh, investments, there's no commission either. No, that's one of the great things about uh, uh, trust deed and mortgage pool investing is it's no load, no fee. 100% of your money goes to work for you, and uh, when you redeem, that's what I love. You guys are just in this for your health. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, in our case, the borrower pays the fees. There you go. We send a part of the money. We do uh, loans to real estate investors who pay origination fees uh, on that money. But the private lenders who fund those loans, all of their money uh, goes to work right away. So no load, no cost, no fees to them. We love that. Yeah, it's amazing. So anyway, I had a couple of uh, articles. And in fact, uh, anyone who was listening uh, last week's show heard me talk about an article I saw in the uh, one of the local uh, blog reports that talked about uh, the number of negative equity homes in California plunging <laughs> to 15% down from nearly 30%. And the, what I want to bring up is, um, you know, there's a lot of numbers and statistics that get thrown around all the time, and, and oftentimes they can be a little bit misleading. And so this week I find an article in... Uh, PropertyRadar.com, which was formerly ForeclosureRadar.com, uh, and uh, very, very good blog, very good articles in there. And here I'm reading something, and I scratched my head. I had to go pull last week's article because it said in uh, August, uh, this past August, 2 million or 
of California's nearly 7 million homeowners with a mortgage are underwater or barely above water. And so the key is, is that last week's article talked about 15% of homes are underwater, but being at or slightly above, in many cases, is, is leaves homeowners in the same predicament. I mean, if you don't have enough equity in your house to sell it, to put money in your pocket, you're stuck, you can't sell. So there are people out there who want to move and they're in this near underwater. So, so this week's article by um, uh, Property Radar talks about, you know, we're still 30% of homeowners with a mortgage are stuck in their homes. They're not necessarily underwater. Their mortgage may be less than the property value of their home, but the difference between the mortgage and the property value is not enough for them to be able to sell it, pay a 6% commission, and have money in their pocket that will allow them to, to move. So what do they so, do? Well, what do they do is they, they wait. And so uh, the point of it is, is that we still have you know, a long way to go in this real estate recovery we're in. And there's a lot of variables that uh, we're looking at. So if, if interest rates do rise, uh, one of the challenges are is how is that going to affect the increasing uh, real estate prices that we've been seeing in the last year? Is that going to continue going into next year? Or are we potentially looking at flat prices or maybe even a slight decline or correction in real estate prices if mortgage interest rates in 14 jump to 5 or 6%? That's the big unknown. Well, and right now, as we mentioned, you know, we hit three three percent of the ten year rate just a few weeks ago, and now we're coming back to two point six. But which what, is good what, news. What, but okay, but yeah. that for investors, yeah, that we, we came back. I mean, for investors, they want went higher, about three percent. But the home but, but homeowners went at two point six. So the question is, what's that line that we cross for mortgage rates where people are like, okay, we're never going to be able to do anything, or or the demand for housing will go down. And I I think. It's not far from where we are today. That's part of the problem, don't you think? I mean, I mean, we if we went up seventy-five or even a, a point and a quarter from where we are today on conventional mortgages. Mm -hmm. How much would that slow the market in your opinion? Well, I mean, that that's the big unknown. I mean, because we've been again, we've had a decade of being spoiled by these these low interest rates, and, and we've talked on previous shows about how a six percent mortgage. I mean, we would have killed for a six percent mortgage ten years ago, right? Right, I mean, right. And uh, and in fact, the Historical weighted average, if you go back 30 years, is you know six, seven percent for mortgage rates. Spoiled, right? right. So, but now it's like, oh my gosh, uh, you know, five percent, uh, you know, or five and a half percent. It, but it's it, it really actually it's not so much the rate itself. It's that real estate prices increased proportionally as a result of money rates going down. Yeah, yeah. And so now your dollar, uh, you know, your 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 income. And the percentage of income that you can dedicate to your housing would buy you more housing at three and a half to four percent than it would at six, seven, or eight. Well, that's, I think that's the big, bigger part is that every one percent that goes up in mortgage rate costs X amount extra in monthly payment. And I'm kind of curious. You said uh, they changed the name from foreclosureradar.com to property radar. Property radar. Uh, why? Yeah. Actually, I, I don't know. I haven't. Foreclosure sounds kind of negative to us. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that was probably the whole was. Thing. That, that was the whole idea though was to, to check on the. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, the thing is, um, you know, going back to this, uh, the, the Fed made a big decision last month not to stop buying bonds. And buying bonds means it keeps rates artificially low. But people are forgetting there's one key component to what you're discussing, that is the discount rate they charge the banks. That's still at 25 basis points. Yeah. And right now, this week, I think Bill Gross did a really compelling article where he talked about um, Janet Yellen will probably be the Fed chairman after Bernanke, okay. because Summers is out now. And that she, until she takes over, they're not going to stop the buying bond buying program, more than likely. And Bernanke wants to go out with a bank. Wants right. to go out. They want her to take the heat. If, totally. Uh, That's if, you know, uh, talk about kicking the can. Yeah. Right. And these people don't make a lot of money. You remember that? It was the woman who took over uh, Cal Berkeley's? You know, tripled her salary from what she was as uh, Homeland Security Chief Jennifer Polzano. It's just like ridiculous how much how will they make how they working for the government? But I was going to say, how, how much does the Fed chairman make? Oh, I think it's under two hundred thousand. I mean, I mean for, for that position, it's actually pretty I mean, low. It's one of the biggest positions in the world. So, but, but is he getting paid now that the shutdown's going on? That's a good question. I probably, they probably need to keep him in, in employed. But, you know, I, well, I, the Fed is not part of the government, don't forget. It's an independent arm. So yes. The shutdown does not affect the Fed. Oh, 
Well, that's salary. right. That's why the, the president is still taking his uh, two hundred thousand. It's right. funny that you that you said that because yeah. actually a lot of people, if you polled the public, I would bet a majority would answer the question. Oh yeah, the Fed is part of the government. Or it's not. No, it's not right. Yeah. It's actually an independent, for-profit uh, organization. Yeah. 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 Anyway, and they they said besides them, stuff, the bond by scary wealthy people. I might add. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the the, the, the bond buying program won't won't stop until next year, twenty fourteen. And they said the prediction right now is 2016 is when they're going to start raising rates. You know how the Fed used to raise and lower rates? Yeah, so 2016. Can they you thought imagine? About, they thought it was That's how bad it is out there. Is what they, they, they said Wait, a couple years ago, they said 2014. Right, when they stopped the bond buying program. Yeah. yeah but now they, they're just in, in the extent of Are they just that's, saying that the economy just, they don't expect the economy to do well until then? Right, the unemployment rate's not going to go down far enough, and, and GDP's not expanding enough. I mean, if you look at companies, their top line number, okay, they're, they're all profitable. All passing profits on to their investors via dividends and buybacks. That's great. That's how investors get paid. That's how your investors get paid, right? They yep. get interest rates. So yep. the idea here is that you know that, that system's in place, but is Target making more money than it was last quarter? Is G making more money than it was last quarter? And the answer is not that much more. Really? It's not like these things are growing exponentially. GDP is not expanding exponentially. So this hovering position I mentioned, it's kind of a tough spot. And that's where you're like, is it better to get 3% yield in a stock or 3% yield in a bond? It's like, you know, it's the question everyone's asking themselves. Well, here's something they do. The federal government can just print more money and hire everybody who's unemployed, and then you have zero unemployment. Right, exactly. I don't know what they would do, but you get them employed. Yes. Well, well if you're a real business. estate investor, that's that's great news to hear that, uh, that you know, the Fed is likely to consider keeping interest rates stable going forward for the next couple of years, because, again, you know, we're idea that mortgage rates would spike up to, you know, spike up to six <laughs> percent or, or or even more, um, certainly would have an impact, downward impact on real estate. And so, if you're you know, buying, fixing, and flipping real estate, you think, uh, well, you better do it quick. You don't want to be holding property for a year or two years, uh, hoping that uh, prices will continue to go up. But um, that's actually good news. That would that 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 would lend to um, at least stability in housing prices, and maybe not the type of appreciation that we've seen in the last 12 months has sort of been, has been kind of this bounce back recovery. But I, I kind of like the idea of a steady, predictable uh, interest rate. Uh, and if it's rising, it's rising slowly because, again, it's, the, it's, it's the, the stability and the predictability, I think, that really are the most important uh, things for an investor uh, to be able to rely on. And certainly in the real estate market, uh, that's important. And, and I think a healthy, you know, Five percent appreciation would be lovely to be able to uh, look forward to you know, in, in the next few years. And obtainable. I mean, these, these returns are yeah. yeah. Re, re, these returns in real estate right now are not obtainable over a long period of time. Right. Traditionally. Very good. So lastly, I've got uh, uh, an article here. Uh, uh, I think it was last week. Uh, Robert Schiff was was talking about this company that was. Uh, helping people with their down payments. It was a down payment assistance. And so there was actually an article in the Chronicle last week, if you want to go back and look it up online, a company called First Rex uh, was, uh, there was a, an example here of how they were charging 40% of the gain uh, in the home uh, and, and providing 10% or half of the down payment. So in, in their, uh, their program is for high-end homes in California right now. So like, for example, $800,000 and above, they will help you with your down payment. You can 10%, they'll come to 10%, and uh, their Definitely. only charge is, is a portion of the gain when you sell Shared appreciation. Shared appreciation. All right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, thoughts for the day. Now I know why it took me six years to finish high school. When I when asked where the Declaration of Independence was signed, I said, at the bottom. And uh, when asked to name six animals that live specifically in the Arctic, I said, two, no, two polar bears and four seals. Yeah, that didn't yeah. work out very well. All right, I want to thank my co-hosts, Mark Hunt of Pacific Private Money, California's fastest growing private lender, and Lou Botmall of LPL Financial. Thank you very much for that uh, information on Obamacare. Tune in next week to the best of investing. We're going to be giving away nine more free vacations for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown, wishing you the best of investing. So long. Good. Thank <laughs> you.